Okay, I'm back. This is Ginny, and I'm doing part two of my uh, experiment on making antiqued paper. I used a coffee and tea bath, and also Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stain in walnut stain color and I have let these wadded up pieces of paper dry overnight. I'm going to open them gently. There's already some surprising colors in here. Uh, not just browns. <laughs> there's, there's like a little purplish, blackish, lots of really cool colors in here. Now the reason I'm opening it so slowly, of course, is to try to avoid tearing it. It's a little bit damp still on the inside. But this makes some really great veining. And in places that actually have torn, you just stitch them shut or uh, glue on a little bit of uh, cheesecloth or I like to use some dryer sheets and decoupage glue, Mod Podge in matte to strengthen paper. Um, I also like to stitch it by hand. So it could be really very uh, Frankenstein kind of paper here. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, one that's a little bit lighter shading, which means I didn't spray any of the Tim Holtz spray on it. Uh, the ink uh, stain. But it has lots of crusty looking brownish spots. Now, if you want your paper to really lie flat when you're done, you can iron it or you can just flatten it out nicely and weight it down with something like an old telephone book. You know, you remember what those are, right? Okay, now this was a different paper. You can see the edge is rippled. That makes me know that it wasn't my um, copier paper. This was um, paper placemat, which I bought a bulk of at some time. And let me just open up another one and see they all come out quite differently, which makes for a very interesting looking journal when you piece it all together. This one's really still quite damp. So. As you can see, there's oh, there's a tiny tear in this one. It has a nice ragged edge from where I tore it originally. And some ugly stains, we gotta love that. Now, um, obviously there's a lot of them here. I'm not going to open them all on camera. But I do want to share that I also did some index cards so I wouldn't just throw out that whole coffee and tea bath without getting plenty of the fine coloration and remarkable stains for my index cards, which I very often will cut down to make artist trading cards or they can be used well, these two stuck together, so oh, it's got a really neat design there. Um, they can be used in a number of ways. You can make small books with them. You can use greeting. You can make greeting cards with them. Anything you like. So here we have a multitude of differently stained papers and index cards that will go into projects for some time to come. And I hope 
you've enjoyed this demonstration as much as I enjoy making these. And you'll notice definitely when you stain paper and lay it out flat, color will go to the farthest down side usually um, because of gravity. Okay, When you crinkle them, it stays everywhere. So that's neat too. Oh, I really like this one. Okay, so I'll just unwrap this one here while I'm doing it. Um, have fun with dyeing papers. You don't always have to just use tea bags and instant coffee. You can use anything you're willing to put your hands into or if you want to put on some gloves that's fine. I never do because I always lose my gloves. Where did I put them? Anyway, um, you can use acrylic paints in the water. You can use food coloring and vinegar in the water. Um, use your imagination. You can use uh, watercolor paints. You can use tempera. It doesn't have to be acrylic all the time. So um, whatever you do, besides enjoying yourself and making something that's truly unique, Keep making stuff. I mean it, okay? Y'all have a good day. Show me what you've done. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.